Mr. Ziello, when you were working on the set of rest, did you personally see um, issues with firearm safety that concerned you? Uh, yes, I did. Will you explain to the jury what's coming to mind as I'm asking you that question? Um, on two separate instances, I came across the the cart where they uh, moved the guns around, the armors would bring them to set and set their cart up. And on two separate instances, I came across that cart basically unmanned with nobody around it. And, uh, you know, looking well, around. Let, 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 let me stop you there. Mm -hmm. uh, was there anything on the cart that caused you to be concerned about the fact that it was unmanned? Yes, there were firearms and ammunition on top of the cart. And why did it concern you that it was unmanned? It's just not something you see normally on a set. Um, it felt wrong and it looked, you know, somebody, anybody could have done anything they wanted to those weapons. And nobody would know. In your experience working on movie sets with armors, uh, is that something that you usually see? No, there's usually a chain of custody. Gun goes from armorist to actor, back to armorist, back to storage. Um, can you recall ever seeing guns and ammunition uh, laying out unattended on a movie set? No. Uh, was there um, anything else uh, with regard to firearm safety that uh, you witnessed that caused you concern? Um, one instance we had a, a large scene in the cowboy town, like in the main part of the um, western town. and. There were a lot of guns involved in the scene. We had finished the majority, like the big uh, wide part, and I was I ended up standing next to an actor who still had his uh, pistol in his holster, was not in the current scene, because we had moved on to another scene. And he was playing with it, messing around, and I just jokingly was like, hey, don't shoot me, you know, put that, <laughs> quit messing with that thing. I, you know, I was standing right next to him, and it, it's not something you normally see. Um, so was Ms. Gutierrez supervising that actor when he was playing around with his gun? No, he was standing by, either waiting to go in again, possibly, or hanging out after he had just finished. I'm not sure. In your experience working on uh, film sets with armorers, are the actors generally permitted to walk around with their uh, real prop guns and manipulate them? Again, there's usually a, like a strict chain of custody, they call it, and it's armorist, gun, gun back to armorist, back to storage. You don't usually see them left with the actors. Um, in your career, have you ever seen that, that you can recall? I don't think so. Okay. Um, and sir, were you um, present on set on October 21st, 2021? Yes. Um, I want to start, why don't we start at lunch, okay? Um, did you have lunch with the crew that day? I did. Uh, and how did you get back, and just to be clear, how far away is the lunch area from the town and the church? Uh, about a quarter mile. It's walkable, but there's vans and you get rides typically. And I had my personal vehicle on set, my truck, and I would use it to go back and forth. Okay. Uh, and on that day, did you drive yourself to, to the lunch area? Yeah. And did you drive yourself back? I did, but I also picked up Helena and drove her back with me on that day. And where did you, did, did you drop Ms. Hutchins off anywhere? Yeah, right at the church. I dropped her off in front of the church. Um, and just to be clear, were you in the church at the time of the incident? I was not. Um, where, let me ask you this, were you close enough that you heard the incident? I was about 100 yards away. So I, uh, I heard everything. Well, I heard the gunshot go off. Um, do you have experience with real firearms? Some. Um, when you heard that sound and you were, I think you said about 100 yards away, mm -hmm. um, did you have any idea what it was? I honestly didn't know if it was part of the, sh the scene. I didn't know if they had started or not. I, I did not. It didn't raise any major 
concern to me until someone came out yelling, call 911. Um, and is, is that something that you heard on your radio or did you see that with your own eyes? Uh, I saw that with my own eyes. I heard them yelling. To call 911? Yeah. And um, what did you do when you realized that there was some type of an emergency? Uh, I immediately ran into the church. And what did you do when you got inside the church? Um, I saw Helena laying on the floor being worked on by the medic. And Joel was to the left. And our dolly grip, Ross, was attending to him. And the, uh, at that time, all the pews were still really tight up on them. So I immediately started chucking pews out of the way. And I moved the dolly. And I cleared room for them to work on Helena. And did you stay in the church while they were uh, uh, performing life-saving measures on Miss, Miss Hutchins? Yeah, I did. I was, <clears throat> excuse me, um, I was directly involved in first aid with her for a number of minutes before the paramedics had arrived on the scene. And when you say that you were directly involved in first aid with her, do you have any first aid training? No, I was just assisting. The medic was having trouble keeping the oxygen mask on Helena's face, she was flailing and tearing it off. And uh, myself, the gaffer, Serge, and our Steadicam operator, Reed, were all around helping uh, stabilize her. I had her head and neck, Serge had her arms, and Reed had her ankles, I believe. Um, was it apparent to you that she had suffered some type of a serious injury? Yeah. Um, and why was that apparent to you? Uh, she was bleeding and in pain, and um, I saw the wound and realized it was life-threatening in the area there was. And when you say you saw the wound, wh what do you, where, where was that? Uh, entry was under her right armpit, I believe, and exit was just inside of her shoulder blades, I think. And did you see both of those, the entry and the exit? Yeah. Okay. Um, and then, uh, at some point, did you were you relieved uh, by paramedics? Yes, the paramedics showed up, and we all fell back and let them take over. Um, if you recall, when you were in the church attempting to render aid, uh, did you see Ms. Gutierrez or hear Ms. Gutierrez? No, she was. They cleared the church pretty quickly. Um, I pushed past whoever was maintaining the door at that moment and went in. Um, but they were they were trying to keep everybody out of there. Okay. And um, at some point then, did you leave the church? Yes. And uh, when you left the church, where did you go? Uh, I, I left the church because they were calling a helicopter uh, and a life lifeline or whatever you call it. And they needed a landing zone cleared and I immediately jumped on uh, Channel 3 with the Teamsters and called for the water truck to come over and clear out a landing zone and I started trying to get vehicles out of the way. I actually hopped in a police vehicle, <laughs> tried to move it and quickly had an officer come up and say he would do it. <laughs> I'm sure. Um, did you take note of anything when you were outside the church? Did anything catch your eye? Um, <clears throat> Uh, I believe after that, um, the helicopter thing, I came back and saw uh, Dave Halls and Hannah having a conversation. Dave Halls was asking Hannah to see the the pistol and wanted to clear the gun and look at it and see what was in it. And I believe he retrieved it. I think in my um, initial interview, I said she had grabbed it, but. Um, in my notes that I took afterwards, I, I believe he was the one who actually pulled the pistol out of the church and brought it outside. Um, and were they were they standing around or over a cart? Yeah, there was a, a Rubbermaid, a black Rubbermaid cart, just to the left side of the door, if you're looking at the front of the church. Just to the left, it was tucked in, it was already... You know, it's kind of, for shooting, we always tuck things in tight around the door, and it was just, it was already there, and we had, they, they were standing in front of it. And what uh, what were they doing? 
Uh, they were removing the bullets from the gun and attempting to check them and see you know, which were dummies and which weren't or what happened. And did you have any concerns about that? I, I did. It immediately felt wrong to me and I, I thought to preserve it, I pulled my cell phone out and actually held it up, you know, tried to record that happening. And I was just so flustered that I actually didn't push record, so I didn't get any footage actually, but I stood there holding my phone as though I were the entire time. Um, so you were attempting to video record them taking the rounds out of the gun? Yeah. Did you happen to see what happened to those rounds? Yeah, they uh, took them out one by one, shook them, checked them, and I believe they ended up on the Rubbermaid cart um, at, as they were going through them. Okay. And um, was this a rather stressful event for you? Yeah. Um, were you interviewed by the police in a trailer on October 21st? Yes. Um, and have you had a chance to review the statement that you gave? Yes. Um, can you tell the jurors what your thoughts are about the accuracy of your statement? Um, honestly, it was, it was pretty inaccurate. Um, I, I had just found out Helena died five minutes before that, and I was uh, very emotional, and I, yeah, in my, after watching it, it I, several times I, I misspoke in that. And why do you think that, that you misspoke and had some errors in your statement? Um, I don't know, I think I was just flustered and it, yeah, I think I said there were five bullets when there were six. Um, it wasn't anything big, but it was just simple, okay. you know, errors. Uh, do you do you recall in that interview describing um, the armorer as a blonde person? Uh, I believe I was talking about her assistant, or who I thought was her assistant. Okay. Um, and yeah, but no, it wasn't. I wasn't trying to describe Hannah. Okay. Uh, you understood that Ms. Gutierrez was the armorer? Yes. Okay.